How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to properly route the drive belt on an Alice Chalmers 811 GT2 riding lawn tractor. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so today in the shop, I have this awesome Alice Chalmers 811 GT2 three-speed riding lawn tractor here. As you guys probably noticed in the thumbnail, this thing has some massive bear claw ATV tires on the back of it. And it also has a bucket up front, which we will be talking about in a little bit. But the focus of today's video, as you heard in the intro, is how to properly route the drive belt on this particular riding lawn tractor. Because from what I've found, the diagram from Alice Chalmers is actually wrong. So today I'm gonna show you how to properly route the belt. All right, so in front of me, I have the drive group diagram from the IPL or the illustrated parts list. If you guys wanna get one of these, you are going to need the model number of the riding lawn tractor. And I can show you guys how to get that on your piece of equipment if it's a little different than mine. There's this little hook and lever. We can pull on this and then you can lift this section right up. My customer does have a slow moving vehicle sign on the back, so it doesn't go all the way back. The battery is gonna be located here as well as all the electrical components. But what you're looking for is going to be this right here. And the model number of this particular riding lawn tractor is a 1690452. Now, all I did was Google that model number and a whole bunch of different tractor websites showed up with all of the IPLs. Again, I just clicked on the drive group because I needed the part number for the belt but more specifically, I needed the diagram to show me how the belt was routed because this equipment was brought in with the drive belt installed incorrectly and my customer was having drive issues. Now, the first thing I'm going to discuss before we get up underneath the machine and I show you guys the drive belt routing is there are going to be two different belts for these machines depending on whether or not you have an eight horse and an 11 horse engine or a 16 or an 18 horsepower engine. So it's eight and 11, 16 and 18. Those are going to have two completely different belts for this particular 800 series Alice Chalmers. To show you guys that, I will put an infographic up on screen there. You guys are gonna see that when I click on the belt, it does give you the two options. So basically you just have to know which horsepower engine you have, and then you can select the proper belt. In this case, the belt for this particular machine is a half by 87.2 inch belt. And that's the part number there in case you guys have the same machine. So we can now move back to looking at the drive belt diagram itself and how the belt is routed in this diagram. Like I said, it's incorrect. Okay, so before we lay down and look at these belts, you have to understand one thing. The engine is underneath here and it spins in a clockwise rotation. So the front spins towards the right of this machine. And because this is a vertical shaft engine, the crankshaft goes down and there is going to be a pulley that sends the belt out in a horizontal position like this. So if we situate ourselves here, it would look something like this on the diagram. Once again, you have your horizontal belts, then they twist and then they go back to a vertical pulley on the back of the machine, which is going to be in the back right corner. So coming to the back right of the mower, they do have this little access port here. And when we look through that, you can in fact see the vertical pulley of the transmission. So we're laying underneath the machine now. Once again, crankshaft pulley at the front, belt goes back. It shows on the diagram, the right side going up and the left side going down. Super simple diagram. How hard can it be to mess that up? Well, I'm gonna show you right at the engine pulley here. Once again, there's the belt. It wraps around horizontally. However, when we come to the left side, you guys are gonna notice that the left side goes up to this pulley here, and then it goes through that cutout there to the top of the transmission pulley back there. Then that comes out around the brake or the clutch engagement pulley. So right now I have the brake released and the clutch engaged. It's all the same foot pedal that moves this whole linkage system here. We're gonna be talking about this rod and what that little set screw does in a moment. But then you can see on the right side, the belt comes from the bottom and goes all the way back to the crankshaft pulley right there. So let's compare. Diagram left side goes down, right side goes up, how it's actually supposed to be. 
left side goes up and the right side goes down. So the diagram in the case of this Alice Chalmers 811 GT2 is incorrect. And I'm gonna show you what the belt looked like when it got here. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this does have a bucket attached to the front of this riding lawn tractor. And this is no ordinary plow. It looks to be like an old snow blower housing that's been converted to use as a push blade, similar to like a plow. So my customer does use this to clear his driveway. What was happening was he loaded it up with snow, he was driving the machine forward, and the belt slipped off. So he called his nephew and asked him if he could reinstall the belt. And my customer's nephew, just like any of you, and just like I would do, is looked at the diagram and said, okay, that's how the belt is routed. However, there was a telltale sign for me that I knew right away that this was wrong. And that is because this top idler is actually offset to the left side of the machine. So logically, the belt on the left side should go underneath this pulley and then head up. All right, so what you're seeing now is obviously the incorrect drive belt routing as shown on the Alice Chalmers diagram. So what I did is I used Photoshop to mirror the image and that's what you're seeing now on screen. So you're still going to have the belt come off of the engine pulley horizontally or side by side. However, the left side of the belt is now correctly going to go up to the top of the transmission pulley and then it's going to wrap around with the right side going down. And now that I've shown you guys how to correctly route that belt, I can explain how the brake and the clutch works and also how to properly adjust the tension of the belt if you guys are reinstalling an old belt that may have had some slipping issues or if you're going to be installing a new belt like I have today. So the brake pedal is here and it has this little hook on it so that when you push the brake all the way down, you can simply push that and the hook hooks onto the front of the running board there and that acts as your parking brake. It's a little tricky to do by hand so I will use my foot to show you how that works. So now the parking brake is engaged and the belt should not have any tension on it. So coming up under the machine here, once again from the right side, this goes towards the bottom and you can see that our belt now has some slack on it. And then when we release the brake, the pulley goes up and you guys can see we have full tension on that belt now. So that thing is nice and tight. When you push your foot down and engage the brake to release the clutch, you want enough slack on this belt to the point where the belt at the front is not grabbing the crankshaft pulley and causing it to move because when you have the brake engaged, if the belt is still too tight, you will end up smoking a belt. The way you adjust that is by loosening off the set screw here, and then you're going to move the foot pedal, which will then move this rod here further back or further forwards. And essentially, like I said, what that does is it just sets the position of where this clutch engages and how far it slacks your belt. You wanna keep in mind that you don't want the belt to the point where it could fall out of this clutching pulley here. And what would happen then is when you release the brake, if the belt is off the pulley, obviously the belt won't go under tension again and you won't be driving. So to give you guys a visualization of how that works, I marked the rod at the back side of that bracket there with a little blue paint marker. And then what I did was I pushed on the brake a little bit and loosened off the set screw and slightly moved the retainer back and then retightened the set screw. So you have to understand that the rod, when you push the brake down, will always pull the same amount forward. However, where you set that little retainer is what positions your bracket, thus what positions the clutching pulley there. So now you guys should be able to see that we still have slack on our belt with the brake now engaged, but the belt is not as slacked as it once was. What you wanna keep in mind is as the engine rotates clockwise, 
you want to make sure that the belt does not grab the pulley. If it does, then that means your belt is too tight and it will be spinning the transmission. So if you were to put your foot on the brake and the transmission was still in gear, the machine would still be trying to push itself forward. Once you figure out your positioning, you can basically put two marks down. The mark that's further forward indicates the position of the rod that set the belt to the point where I thought it was a little too slack with the brake engaged. And then the point that we have now, which is about maybe three quarters of an inch back, has it in a position where the pulley is not grabbing the belt. However, there is just enough tension on it to the point where it's not going to slip out of this pulley that easily if the machine is still in motion and hitting bumps. An easy test is simply to put the transmission into neutral and then engage your brake. Fire up the engine, and if you notice your transmission pulley there is spinning, then your belt still has too much tension on it when the brake is engaged, and all you have to do is go back to that rod there and move the retainer slightly forward, and it'll fix that. Another thing that I wanted to point out is the gear selector here and the positions that my customer has marked out on them. They are actually incorrect as well. So while reverse is in fact in this position, my customer has first gear marked down here, and that's actually second gear from what I was able to research. So if I pull up a little picture here, this is going to be the diagram that is supposed to be a sticker in front of the gear selector there. And we can actually see that second gear is going to be on the bottom left, and third gear is going to be on the bottom right. Now this may have also led to my customer smoking the drive belt because we have to keep in mind that if my customer thought that second gear was actually first gear, he would have been leaving from a stationary position in second gear instead of first gear. This may have led to my customer using the brake or clutch foot pedal to mitigate the speed of this lawn tractor, which is never something you guys wanna do because keep in mind when you push down on the brake, you are decreasing the tension on your drive belt. And this system is not a variable drive compared to like an MTD lawnmower with a continuously variable transmission. This one has three fixed gears and a reverse gear. And if you wanna drive in any of those gears, the belt must have full tension on it to prevent slipping. So I got a roll of painter's tape here that I marked one, two, three, and R. And that way I can just stick the tape onto the plastic here and I don't have to mark up my customer's machine. He can go ahead and remove those numbers and then write them down with a paint marker if he wants. That way what I'm doing is not permanent, but it gives an accurate readout for my customer. So it doesn't have to look pretty, but it is informational enough. At least now my customer will know which gear to switch into. And this is definitely going to help with plowing because if he was putting that thing into second when plowing some snow, maybe he might try to plow some heavier snow with it in first gear. And it might do a little bit better because the engine is going to be spinning at the same RPM, but the transmission is going to be spinning slower, which will multiply the torque. And paired with these massive ATV bear claw tires, this thing must be a beast in the snow. So let's fire this thing up and take it for a spin. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Informational enough because I know if any of you guys are looking at that diagram and trying to figure out how that drive belt is supposed to be routed, you guys might get a little confused as my customer's nephew did when trying to reinstall the old belt that slipped off. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel up for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.